In Europe, though, does the deflation psychology worry you now? Oh, I think it should worry all watchers of the Eurozone a great deal because for all that the ECB has done by basically uh, promising to do whatever it takes to save the Eurozone, the fact remains that banks have not cleared their balance sheet. Therefore, they are not lending to small, medium-sized companies. Therefore, those companies cannot grow or if they have to pay back debt, they cannot roll it over. So they find themselves in real problems. Now, this is, uh, of course, an uncanny similarity to Japan with its so-called zombie banks that plagued the economy during the 1990s and was only resolved when a new government came in in 2003 mm, that mm. injected massive amounts of public money into them. And until we get full banking union and some which will enable some resolution to the problem of bad debts in Eurozone banks, we're going to be plagued with fears of lack of loan growth and deflation. Yeah, um, but, but, but do, you, do you worry that the great rotation now is, is, is being reversed or at least the, it, it, we're beginning to see a reversal of that? I wouldn't say worried. I, I can perfectly understand, if you like, why we're seeing that. We, we're seeing uh, uh, the continuation of the U.S. recovery. It stops and starts the story, but it's basically on a positive trend. Uh, the U.K. is, you know, as we know, is growing stronger than had been expected. Uh, Japan has setbacks, but I do think that abenomics will uh, see growth return. I think. I think the southern periphery part of the Eurozone is the big question mark. Generally, though, I'm reasonably confident about the outlook for global growth, therefore for global profits, therefore for corporate earnings that buoy, uh, buoy uh, equities. It seems, seems like the Fed uh, is the only story in town still, right? Uh, correct, but I'd be very cautious. I have heard some people say, oh, the, uh, the fact that the S&P 500 has reached new all-time highs must mean that the investors have tapered in the end of quantitative easing. Absolute nonsense. Imagine a building propped up by two pillars, one of which is growth, the other is quantitative easing. What we've seen is more support from the growth pillar. The quantitative easing pillar remains unchanged. We don't know what's going to happen when that pillar is, 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 uh, is withdrawn. So I, I don't fall into that complacency that I've seen from some investors regarding the tapering away of QE.